Hello, welcome back to Silverstone Shooting Centre in this round two of the Hawk British Mini Rifle Championship. First round saw triumphant from Jim and Paul in their divisions. Anthony's with them now to see how they got on the first round. Thanks, John. Joining me now is the winner of the Super Senior category, Paul. Paul, uh, congratulations. It wasn't an easy gig, was it? No, it definitely wasn't. Uh, I've not uh, shot a rifle at 100 metres before, um, so it was all new to me. And, uh, you know, could have done a lot better and will do, but it's new experience. I'm very glad with it. OK, Jim, firstly, congratulations. Yeah, uh, winner you. of uh, round one of the Hawk Optics British Mini Rifle Championship. Um, we're here for round two, a bit of a different layout. Um, what can we expect from you here? Um, hopefully it'll go better, because I've had a chance to get some practice in for this time, confirm my zeros, and put a new forward grip on the gun. So hopefully it'll go well. Uh, we'll you, <laughs> you had a look at the, uh, the stages so far. You've done a few already. What's yeah. been your favourite? Um, stage three was really good fun. The long course on the 100 meter, a lot of running and gunning, some quick shooting, but also some challenging shots and 50 meter steals. So I really enjoyed that. Well, let's have a look at the overall standings from round one. It was Jim Staley taking the honours, followed by Ben Ducker, Tom Samples, uh, Kelvin Leeton down in fifth place. Paul van der Vosch is super senior down in 15th, leading his class as well. Salvatore is second and senior, then we Clive Gamlin, third and senior. Marty Secker, 21st, uh, it was his first time out shooting. Uh, Aaron Coates in 23rd, then Tony Porter. So here's the first stage out of six. John, what are we looking at? Mixture of distances here. We've got one target that's about 40 metres away underneath the barrier, so you can't see them. And lots of targets tucked behind barriers, so they've got to manoeuvre around the place and see them each place. Stand by! Paul van den Bosch, uh, winner of the Super Senior category from round one. Kneeling down, using uh, the platform for steadiness. Yes, yeah, using the barrier is a good idea. They're about 25 metres away, the little yellow ball targets everyone loves so much. So you can see the one in the far distance is tucked behind that barrier, so they have to manoeuvre around to see these ones. It's one of the stages where you have to think a bit like chess, which ones to shoot and what distance to shoot them from. Obviously, you lose time by getting near the target but you're more likely to hit it, or you do it further back and then save the time on running, but making sure you hit the target. Just got that those tub at the back there. I was just about to say, it looks like the shooter is having a better time with the balls at longer distances. Yes, you could say that. I always have more time with balls and distance. Aaron Coates now. Again, member here, so he should know where on the range. Are these something that uh, you, you can use to practice when you're actually shooting at your range uh, when the tournament's not on? To be honest, we don't. No, the, the ball targets, we want to keep them only for competition, so we don't allow any of the members to practice with them, um, mainly because we want to keep consistency, but also uh, it's a unique thing we run here, so we try and keep them only for competitions. But the rest of the stages, are all, all, everyone can use the whole range for practice. And we have several members who only come here to practice for competition. He's got those nicely there. Just those three close ones. And let's, uh, let's hear from Aaron Coates down in the uh, paddock. Aaron had a bit of a nightmare in round one. Um, been a better day for you so far though. I hope so. Lots of movement, no jams, uh, only a handful of misses and uh, a few rounds getting hopefully high scores. So yeah, pretty confident this time. Stand by! Uh, Josh Hicks this time. Now I haven't seen Josh shoot before, but Josh is uh, a very experienced competitor and the current British Mini Rifle Champion. So uh, hopefully you'll make short course of this one. Yep, got that now, doesn't he? See, so that's a very smooth gear, uh, mag change there. There's no slowing down, changing the magazine there. It's a perfect way of doing it. Yeah, showing a real experience. He didn't like the balls at short distance, though, <laughs> does he? <laughs> no, it does seem easier to hit these balls from a longer distance. Uh, that's down to the zero on the gun, isn't it? Pretty much, yes. Let's see what he has to say. 
Joining me now is UK's number one mini rifle shooter, Josh Hicks. Hello there. Josh, it's uh, nice to see you uh, here, here at round two for the Hawk Optics British Mini Rifle Championship. Um, some good stages, six stages ahead of you. Uh, mm. How are you feeling going into this? So, I feel, I feel like it's, it's been a while since I've shot. It's been about 10 months, but I feel like it's been really good getting used to new optics. I've, got, I've gone from a scope. Um, I've gone to a scope from a red dot. So it's getting used to that is quite interesting. But the stages today have been really good, actually. A good mix of close, long left to right, it's not just shooting straight. Stand by. Next up we have Stephen Durrant. Not seen him shoot yet, so let's see how he gets on with the uh, with the balls. Well, Steve should like speed. He actually works for a local Formula 1 team. So uh, let's see if he can take that pace, pace from road car racing to uh, to shooting. Taking it down relatively easily. Yeah, he's doing well. Steve, again, is, is new to shooting. He's more used to long-distance shooting. So this is a very different kettle of fish for him. Didn't mind distance on the balls, though. Well, let's see if we get some of the, uh, the shorter distance ones. We could get caught out. No chance. Oh, that last one. <laughs> I think he's got frustrated. Oh, he's got frustrated now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Finally got it, mate. <laughs> Smile from Steve. <laughs> Ronnie Graham, super senior, really second uh, to Paul Van den Bosch at the moment. He's shooting a different gun this time, Ronnie. He shot a Smith the first time round. That's a Chris DMK he's shooting now. So uh, change of guns for Ronnie. Is that the uh, the metal one? Yeah, yeah. Chris is an all metal AR. So obviously uh, uh, Ronnie's decided to go with a, a more substantial type gun. Got it. It's interesting, Ronnie's not using the barrier to get stable, so he's obviously more confident with the gun at distance than standing up, which seems to work well for him. I suppose with the extra weight, it's a bit more stable in your arms. There's no right or wrong with guns. Some people like the very lightweight gun the Smith & Wesson represents. Other people like the more solid gun, uh, all metal construction that the Chris took example of. So, oh, Is it off or not? Yes, it's gone. Making light work of that, Ronnie. He's using the barrier and it's, he shot better standing up. So, interesting. Got in the end. Okay, Ronnie, here we are again uh, at uh, Silverstone Shooting Centre for round two of the uh, Hawk Optics British Mini Rifle Championship. Um, you were third in the senior uh, category last time out. Uh, what can we expect from you here? Well, uh, I used change guns today. I used my Chris today. Uh, which has got a primary arms dedicated to two scope. First time I've used the competition. Um, it was all right. It, it never. It wasn't any misses. Um, but as I said, uh, uh, as we said in previous interview, when you're at a range and you're zeroing your gun and you're sitting relaxed, it's when you're actually running around, tr uh, running against the clock. The, and the adrenaline's pumping, it does make it a lot, lot more difficult to keep the gun steady. Are you ready? Stand by! Matt Cox. He's struggling a bit on the further distance ones there. He's not using a the scope there, I don't think, is he? Oh, the butterfly on the ball. Yeah, well, that made all the difference. <laughs> this is a safe sport. You see, we can't even hurt a butterfly. <coughs> Bit erratic. Accuracy by volume there from Matt. <laughs> Sometimes it's the best way. The American military has run by it for years. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. It was not a bad run till then. I think that's going to murder his time. Last ball as well, last target. Ah, that's frustration there. OK, Matt, after a, a successful first round, finishing mid-table, the first round of the Hawk Optics British Mini Rifle Championship, we're here again for round two. Um, first stage didn't go quite go to plan, did it? Not quite. Um, I, I, I struggle with one target right at the very end, so... Uh, that probably lost me about 20 seconds, otherwise I would have put in quite a competitive time, so that's a bit frustrating. 
First we've seen uh, Alex here. Didn't shoot round one. Come at round two. Seems to have got the balls nailed. Yeah, even at a long distance. Using a uh, magnifying scope. What would that be, four times? It depends. I mean, looking at the scope, it's a one to six. Uh, oh, dropped a mag there. Hope he didn't need that later on. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's probably two, three times power at this sort of distance. Or maybe not at all. Smooth run from Alex, doing well. Yeah, good effort. Well done. So here's the results after stage one. Jim Starley at the top again, followed by Josh Hicks. We kind of thought he'd be up there. Yeah, well, Josh is a leading competitor, so I'm not surprised he's up at the top. And then David Ashcroft is the best score he's had the last two rounds. Uh, Stieg off 11th. Uh, Alex Florence, who we just saw then, down in 14th. I thought it would be better from him. Uh, yeah, it was the first time here. And Steve uh, Durant obviously did very well, despite the fact he uh, mag-dumped the last target to get some time out. So he still did very well coming in 16th. Uh, Matt Cox after, uh, after that jam and a reload on the last target down in 22nd. Yes, I mean, as you get further down, Neil Wheeler again. Uh, it's only second ever competition. So it's still, still near the bottom, but it's certainly getting better. And then Paul van der Bosch come at 21st. Welcome back to the Hawk Optics British Mini Rifle Championship. We're at round two. Stage one has just been done. Let's see what stage two has in order. This will be fun. This is a very short stage. Um, you're only 10, 12 meters away from the targets, but you've got one exposure. The targets turn away, and you'll hit all of them as quick as you can with an unloaded start. Here's Steve Ollison, first time we've seen him. First time competing as well for Steve. So he's only got two seconds to shoot Five targets. Uh, apparently not long enough. <laughs> There's a target to the right and a target to the left. Safety was on. You've got two targets there where one's 50 metres away and obviously it's only a two second exposure uh, with unloaded start. So it's basically up at them fast. Um, and any misses you have will penalise you badly. So the last thing you want is a jam on that first round. That's very smooth from Zach. So he was up and loaded before the targets even turned. We got five out of six. <coughs> Good run, but I think there's a miss in that last target. So Alpha and a mic, I think. Very smooth on the, on the load and the, and the shooting there. He was up and there for the target's turn. Stand by. Salvatore. Again, very smooth. I wasn't he, had, he had time to spare there. Very good. I don't think we're going to see that very often when they hit the first target before they, uh, they, they, they turn us. He did well there. That was a nice smooth load and straight away, so uh, he'll be happy with that, I think. Are you ready? There's Ben Ducker, one of the favourites. Stand by! Nah, that didn't seat right. Yeah. That jam. Didn't, it didn't sound right going into the gun there. Yeah, this is going to muddle the time, I'm afraid, for Ben. He won't be happy. Second place in round one was Ben Ducker. Ben, uh, we're here at round two. Uh, how do you think this one's going to work out for you? Uh, I would be very surprised if I finish second today. I think if I can be in the top half today, that would be a good result. Um, some stages better than others. Um, on the one with the turning targets, a little bit of a, a misfeed meant that um, I lost out on hitting some of those. They disappeared before I can get back on them. So I know I've lost out on a few points on that one. But um, it's, I've, I've enjoyed myself today. Is Otto Michalko, is that how you pronounce his surname? Yep, Michalko. Otto is actually a gun builder, so he's shooting one of his battle arms guns that he's made. I think he hit pretty much all of those targets yeah, as well. Yeah, good advert for his gun. I think he shot quite well. Uh, Alpha Charlie, though. Are you ready? Back with Steve. Stand by. That's brave, Steve. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. I think you I nearly did target. it. Yeah, it was a good idea. I mean, that's a, that'll be the fast way to shoot the stage. And a couple of alphas there. Brave for Steve, though. Good effort. Are you ready? 
Josh, let's Hello. see what you can do. Oh, no, that's unlucky. I think that was a bit uh, hopeful to try and get a few of them, but get as many as you can. Two alphas and a long target, though, so. So here's the uh, results after stage two. It's Chris Gamlin uh, taking the honours, followed by uh, John Chambers and uh, David Ascroft. As you can see, some of the gyms down to fourth. That was a tough stage, some of the leading guys. Um, Otto did very well, sixth with his uh, battle arms gun. Very good. Yeah, you found it tough as well, down in 15th. Yeah, well, we can't all shoot them perfectly, can we? Uh, but uh, I beat some of my staff that's happy. And Steve did very well in 19th. Um, are you happy with that as well? And ben Ducker all the way down in 25th after that jam. Um, where did Josh Hicks? I didn't see him. He came in up a second, so he did very well. One of the most essential things with shooting is obviously the guns. Now, it, with my naivety, they all look very similar to me, John. Uh, could you just talk us through them? There's uh, three of them there. One of them looks very different. These two look very similar. Yeah, I mean, obviously, mini rifle is exactly that. They're, they're miniature rifles, for a better phrase. The, the guns may be full size, but the term mini rifle refers to the fact that in the UK, the law dictates the largest calibre round that we can shoot in semi-auto form. So in other words, every time you pull a trigger, a round comes out. It's .22 calibre. So all these guns we have here are all 2 2 calibre semi-auto guns. And as you can see from the course of fires and shooting, you have to be able to shoot a bullet after time after time. Yeah, I've seen, we've seen a lot of jamming uh, in this early stages of the tournament. Um, is that an aspect of the gun and the way it's made? There's, there's, at the end of the day, no gun is perfect. Uh, and that's why there are different versions here. And in the, the day, you will have a situation where Guns will fail, guns will uh, uh, misfire or have a jam, etc. It's, it's part of life. And part of one of the things with, with the mini rifle especially is adapting the gun to suit the competition environment and different kinds. So we've got three different guns here. Two of them look very similar. Um, and the first thing we mentioned is that all the magazines are empty uh, and we're in low and low range here. And so it's quite important to mention that. We're just doing it for, for a presentation take. So this one here is a Smith & Wesson 1522, guns empty. It's a very standard, what we call an AR platform. An AR doesn't refer to, to assault rifle, it means armor light rifle. And it's simply the design it has with a magazine, the Thatcher magazine, which has 25 rounds in, uh, and then obviously a gun which has very similar functionality in terms of how the, how the, the gun works with a single aim point red dot sight on. And that's probably the most popular gun you'll see in competition at the moment. Okay, uh, and in terms of the way that they're structured and the weight, does that make much of a difference in this kind of environment? Well, yes, one of the issues that people sometimes find with the Smith & Wesson 1522 is a very lightweight gun. So uh, another popular version, again, an identical AR platform style, is this is the Chris DMK. Now this is completely metal gun, so it's much more solid, much heavier. And if you compare it to the other one, if you grab it and point it down range, It's a heavier gun compared to the Smith & Wesson. Mm. And this one's obviously fitted with a Hawk uh, telescopic sight rather than a red dot. And there's no right and wrong. There are different versions, different people see how they like them. OK, and uh, finally, talk us through this last one we've got here. Well, yeah, there's also some scary stuff out there. And this is my gun. Uh, this <laughs> is a Chris Vector. Now, this is a new rifle uh, out at the moment. Um, very different style. Uh, and it's done primarily with obviously a much larger mag magazine with a 30 round magazine for it. Again, the gun is empty. Um, and it means that it's a much shorter platform, a little bit heavier. And now and mine is fitted with multiple optics. So I have a EOTech holographic sight, which is zeroed to 25 meters. And then I have an aim point red dot sight, which is zeroed at 10 meters. Uh, so it means I can change angles when I'm shooting from longer distance to shorter distance. But it feels quite different in terms of the gun, but does the same thing and shoots the same size calibre bullet as well. Uh, when it comes to mini rifle, um, is there a limit on the capacity of the magazine? Technically, in terms of regulations, 30 rounds is the maximum that you're allowed to have. But again, different countries have different rules. For example, in Germany, the, the local laws there uh, means they have a maximum number of rounds of magazine of 10, which means that really mini rifle is tough to shoot in Germany because <laughs> obviously you see the course of fire here, they may require 30, 40 rounds to shoot. And that assumes you hit everything. Um, so it can be a bit more complicated. Uh, but again, the, the, the similarity between them is that really they're all running the same calibre, which is a reasonably small bullet. That's why it's called mini rifle, because the distances that we shoot is a maximum 120 metres. So it means that really where practical rifle, it will shoot out of 300 metres. We're like a shortened version of it, which suits us in the UK because we don't have the space. Uh, there's not many ranges that can shoot beyond 50 metres, frankly, let alone doing 300. 
Um, well, we've heard about the guns, let's see them in action. Now on to stage three. Three barriers there, John. What are we looking at? Well, we've got some no-shoot targets here as well, so shooting one of those will get you a ten-point penalty. So what you got to do is manoeuvre between the barriers, shoot the targets, but don't shoot the red ones. Hey, hey. Josh Hicks first. He's being very deliberate here. Again, shooting a no-shoot target is quite a hit, a 10-point penalty. So they'll be keen to avoid those, but obviously you see the targets are covering the higher scoring areas. Be fast and get a no-shoot, uh, avoid the no-shoots, or be a bit quicker and take the risk. It's a nasty one uh, by you, that, John. Yeah, I'm mean that way. <laughs> Stand by! Here's Zach Rummage. Interesting how some shooters are taking the papers first and then finishing off on the balls are only a metre and a half away, or vice versa. There's no right way it ever suits you. Yeah, Zach's been pretty consistent here. I see a lot of alphas coming up, which is good. There's an alpha just there, two alphas. That's a shame. Again, static mag change will hurt his time quite badly. There isn't really that much movement in this stage. Uh, no, it's a lot of lateral movement. The idea is to minimise it. Well, I'm, not, I'm surprised someone's gone out to one knee to shoot a target a metre away, but if it works, it works. And it works. Stand by. Here's Aaron. Yep, yeah, Aaron loves the balls. Difficult to see from this angle if they're actually hitting the. Uh, well, there's a couple of there's a couple of alphas there on the right hand side. It's actually tough for the shooter as well. They're about 20 meters away, so it's really hard to actually see where their rounds are going, and that's part of the part of the sport. A bit nearer they'll be able to see, but at the moment they haven't taken somewhat of a guess as to see where the rounds are going. So, if you can't see, do you top up to get a better score, or if you've hit the no shoot target, do you just move on to the next one? Again, static mag changes. It's uh, Aaron's new to shooting. He'll 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 realise that he needs to be moving when he's changing a magazine. And what we find uh, throughout the, the season as well, the, uh, the more experienced shooters helping out the uh, the, the inexperienced, uh, and as a result, uh, you get a bit of a le level playing field near the end of the season. Very much. And Paul's a good example. He's a very experienced shooter. I think he'll rattle through this very easily. what Paul's doing is minimising how many times he moves. So he'll move, shoot as many targets, move again to many targets and minimise his time on moving. Are they allowed to watch each other shoot so they can get an idea of the tactics to use? Yes, very much. The, the, the whole sport is, whilst it's individual, people help each other out and everyone takes a turn going in first. Oh, he's got the balls nicely. There's a few alphas out there as well, so uh, well done, Paul. Yeah, I wouldn't surprise he's, he's high up the ranking there. Well, Josh Hicks taking the honours, uh, followed by Ben Ducker. Kelvin Leeson in fourth place as well. And there's Paul, seventh. That's his best score he's had in the last two rounds so far, so definitely shot that nicely. Jim Staley down in, down, in, down in ninth place. Hello and welcome back to round two of the Hawk Optics British Mini Rifle Championship. This morning we've seen Josh Hicks showing his experience, but stage four is about to get underway. John, what are we looking at here? We're onto the metal plates again now. So again, some apertures they need to shoot around. A very short area they can't move away from. So here, for example, they can see the plates, but not all from one aperture. So they must try and manoeuvre in between the apertures and shoot the plates. The trick here is not to shoot the wall, <laughs> which sounds easy. Uh, but also you can look to the optic, but the barrel may be hitting the wall. Kelvin up first. Stand by. He's having a pretty good day so far, there is Kelvin. See, it's not tough shots, they're only 10 metres away, but he has to manoeuvre around the wall to get through each one. Nicely done, good run, he'd be happy with that. He's just checking he's not this one. <laughs> confidence, Kelvin, confidence. Jim trying to make up for uh, early mistakes. It's quick. He's not playing games, is he? That's a smooth run. That's well shot. Stand by. 
David Ashcroft with his Star Wars Strybor gun. See, the Imperial Empire has no chance against him. It's not as easy as it looks, is it? It looks quite hard, personally, but... <laughs> Now, Colin Christensen, not seen him shoot before. Uh, he's again a reasonably new competitor, but going well. Such a satisfying noise. Oh, nicely done. Again, quick check. Again, another Lantac shooter. This is Chris. He's actually sponsored by Lantac. Son of a range officer as well, isn't he? And he represents the brand very well. Nicely shot. Yes, he is. Um, Chris's dad is actually one of the range officers, Clive, which you'll see his name list. Now, lady competitor, Claire Bloomfield. Yep, we have a few lady competitors. Not as many as we'd like. It is a sport that's very equal opportunities in that regard. Um, but um, hopefully trying to get uh, more ladies trying and shooting it. Shooting a bit low. Oh, that's unfortunate. She was doing well there. Shooting a bit low. Yeah, Claire's giving me a help here now. I think it's, that's fair enough. It's Claire's first competition, so we want to encourage people to carry on. Yeah, it's a round jammed in the chamber. Good for Claire, helping her out. All right, carry on, Claire. Well done. There we go. It's a tough stage if you have a jam it does completely freak you out and you're worrying about what's going on and another one again there so unfortunate for Claire this she was doing really well in terms of targets strong Excellent. finish well done at the end well done Claire hey if you finish then don't you So here's the results after stage four. Jim Style, we saw her having that perfect performance there. And then followed by Kelvin Leeson, we saw him having a good run. Ben Ducker in third. Yeah, you can see by watching them, Jim had a good run. So did Kelvin, very close at the top. And Tom Samples, uh, one of your boys. Yep, doing very well. And then going down, Alex Florence, obviously shooting earlier on, down in 16th, but uh, not a bad score. Yeah, and Paul Vanden Bosch down in 19th. Otto also didn't do so well on that one, down to 51%, so I'm doing very happy with that one. And I also did really badly there, 28th, but uh, let's move on from that one. As we heard from John in round one, we have two range officers here at Silverstone Shooting Centre for the Hawker Optics British Mini Rifle Championship. We have Clive to my left and James to my right. Now, in round one, John mentioned that there's a few things that you're looking out for. One of them is the finger trigger and also where the gun is pointing. Could you just elaborate a bit more on that for us? Well, it's very simple. The rules don't allow people to move their finger on the trigger. That's for safety reasons. Um, we also mean they need to make sure they're pointing it in a safe direction at all times, the rifle. Obviously, again, for safety reasons. So those are the two things we were looking out for. Gun pointing in a safe direction, finger off trigger when moving. And is that an instant disqualification, is it? it it's a warning. The first is a warning. Um, we try and warn people before they do an unsafe act. If they commit an unsafe act, they're out of the, out of the match completely. And we've done two rounds here at uh, Silverstone Shooting City Centre. Um, has anybody brought the rules? No, I mean, they've been very good. We've had to shout a few warnings. I've had to shout, shout a few warnings. I've spoken to a few people after they finished, to reinforce a few matters, with them, but no one's done and committed an unsafe act or they wouldn't have finished the match. Now, today you've been on stages one, two and three, um, but Clive, you've been on four, five and six. What's that been like today for you? Yeah, it's been good. Again, um, everyone's been safe. Um, we try to uh, ensure that all the competitors understand the rules and there is no ambiguity at the beginning. And... Um, as James said, we're generally uh, there watching the competitor and their rifle at all times. So if they get close to uh, breaking the uh, muzzle angles um, or they start to think about doing something with their finger on the trigger, we will shout a warning at them. You've been involved in uh, shooting for quite a long time now. Um, this, the, the start of this tournament, the stages have been fantastic, as some of the competitors have been saying. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think they've been good. They've been interesting. Um, uh, you know, some interesting props. Um, the good thing about this range is we get out, get to shoot out to 100 metres. Um, there aren't many rifle, mini rifle ranges around um, in Great Britain at the moment where you can shoot that far. Uh, Bisley's probably about the only other one. 
Um, so it, uh, it's very challenging for the competitors when you're shooting a tiny weeny little 2 2 rimfire cartridge. And uh, who's your money on for this tournament? Well, that'll be saying, I mean, at the moment, um, I think uh, uh, Jim Starley and Ben Ducker are sort of up there. Um, Josh Hicks over there um, didn't shoot the first round. Um, he's won the sort of mini rifle championships in the UK PSA for the last few years, and I think the NRA as well. Um, so, you know, he's got to be up there. But there's some new talent as well um, that I've not seen on the circuit before that are doing really well. So I think at these early stages, um, it's anybody's game. <laughs> I'm going to ask the same question to you, James. Uh, well, from today's competition, um, well, the stages I saw, I put my money on probably Josh by a close margin on Ben. Um, Jim had a good shoot. He had an unfortunate, he had a miss on one of the last stages, which sort of cost him, cost him dearly. A miss is uh, very painful at the high level. Yeah. Well, let's see uh, how this all pans out. Let's get back to the action. So, stage five, about to get underway. Lying down, John. Yeah, prone stage. Uh, prone is what we call lying down and shooting. So a couple of targets very close and then a few targets 100 metres away. We're not seeing John shoot yet. That, John's a very experienced competitor. More in a shotgun, but first on a mini rifle. But I think he's doing well here. So is that a 100 metres or is it uh, closer to 90? That's about 95 metres. So we try and mix it up. I think he shot that nice and smoothly, actually. That's a good run. Steve Goff with his land tack. Seems to work well. A bit slower than John, but I think he's been quite deliberate making sure he gets some good scores. Couple of alphas there. If you're finished, unload and show clear. He's not sure though, look. <laughs> <laughs> That's difficult at that, uh, that kind of range as well. Now, Matt Liddy, not seen him shoot before, and Matt has got his bipod out, which is probably sensible at 90 odd metres. Looking pretty good. Downside, of course, is the bipod makes it slightly more awkward to manoeuvre around, but it shouldn't be too difficult. But it's shooting high there at those targets. Again, down to zero of the gun. And here's you, Mr. Thorne. I get a bit of TV every now and then. <laughs> so, now that you've uh, been left handed, you started from left to right. It's just easy in terms of maneuverability. Uh, and also, with the Chris Vector that I shoot, I can lean on the magazine so I don't need a bipod. Clean run. I'm not unhappy with that. <laughs> There's Kelvin. Another one with a bipod. Now he's shooting three per target. I think he just wants to make sure. I need a two score, but adding another round in just gives him a bit more, a bit more comfort. Did it do much to the score? Oh, that was a beautiful that Alpha's ended to see that. He did very well there. Yeah, it's just, it's just confidence. Obviously, each shot takes more time. Now Jim's got a lot of experience shooting prone. He, he shoots prone target rifles, so I'm expecting to be good scores down the bottom from him. And needs to make up for the early mistakes as well. Oh, that's unfortunate. Jam at the wrong time. That will hurt. They, they were high. Here's Tony. Interesting. He chose to sit up rather than actually lean across. So uh, obviously more confident there. It seemed to, seemed to work. But interesting to see on the scores in terms of the bipod does make a difference in people's accuracy at 90 metres. I think it will. He topped up at two alphas with an alpha. There's <laughs> <laughs> Chris with his uh, Lantac. Now he's got no huge experience shooting long distance, he said. He's obviously more of a shotgunner, but I think he's, uh, he's parachuted nicely into this sort of distance. Is it a difficult uh, transition from shotgun to mini rifle? Shotgun is more recoil, obviously they recoil more, uh, but the, the targets are much nearer uh, and obviously less accuracy. Obviously you're shooting a spread of bullets rather than one. I definitely should have done better this time. Um, my accuracy has been a lot better. Haven't actually had any misses today, which uh, is a pretty good day. Um, time has been alright and yeah, it's been good. I think uh, it's 
a bit more movement, so and I'm quicker at sort of moving, so <laughs> that kind of suits my uh, strong suits. So here are the results for stage five, and it's uh, John Chambers uh, taking the honours. Kelvin Leeton, we saw a very good run, coming second, and Ben Ducker, Jim Staley down in seventh. Uh, Tony Porter was in the top ten, he had the bipod. Yeah, at the top six, three were bipods, uh, so it does make some difference. I was sick with no bipod, so what does that mean? Well, you had your magazine. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> well, please do join us after the break for this final stage of round two. Hello and welcome back to round two of the Hawk Optics British Mini Rifle Championship. Stage six is about to get underway. Another fun one, John. Yep, 75 metre targets papers and then a lot of steels in between. Now on the steel targets, they can't engage them any nearer than 10 metres away. So they have to shoot those first before they get any nearer. Then they can shoot the papers. If they're confident, they can shoot the papers to a distance. But there's a few papers tucked behind barriers they have to get near to. Now there's no distance they can, they can shoot the papers any distance. The steels they must shoot from where they are. Jim Starley first. It's a suit, Jim. He likes these kind of stages. Nicely done. All the steels down, I believe. Mag change on the move. Very smart. Not an awful lot of aiming going on there, but it's only a <laughs> metre away. So. Now, if you miss those, uh, you shouldn't really be doing this. Very true, yes. But it's, again, with the zero of the gun, it's very easy to shoot over the top. Kelvin. Yep, getting the struggle on zero. That's it. Again, quick. Yeah, a bit of hip firing going on there from <laughs> Kelvin. <laughs> good run. That was a good run. John Chambers again. First time I've seen him shoot, actually, isn't it? Yeah, we did well on the 100 metre stage, the prone stage. Not so great on the plates, but he's, uh, he's doing well. Hey, he's got his iron now. Nicely done. Oh, really close. Yeah, I think um, sort of hosing those a little bit. <laughs> Chris with his Lantac. It's very easy to swing past these targets and assume you hit them and then miss them. So it's uh... that's not a tr it's not an easy stage. This no, it's quite tough. Um, the plates are quite obviously one shot to go down. But they're very unforgiving. If you miss them, you miss them. There's no points to score. Methodical. Look quick, look quick. Back with David and his Stryborg. He's always wearing really cool hats, is uh, David? <laughs> yeah, he works in the, in the TV and media industry, so I guess uh, his image is important to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I nearly fell into those. If he hasn't scored alphas and all of those, he should be disqualified. <laughs> I don't think you could just make up rules like that, John. Yeah, just to annoy people, really. <laughs> Stieg off. Another Lantac. One, two. Have we seen a clean run yet? I think Jim, no, Jim, we haven't. Would, 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 did Jim have a clean run? That's a good point. No, no one's got the plates down cleanly with, uh, without any misses at all. Yeah, he's shooting three per target as well, just to try and make sure. Yeah, he's uh, shooting slightly high as well. Are you ready? Stand by! Matt Liddy again. I can see Matt Liddy shoot a couple of times. 
Go on, nice clean run. Oh. No. They're about 70 metres away, those far plates. They've been a bit of a struggle for a lot of people. Yeah, some of the competitors were complaining that the uh, the plates are the same colour as the sand, as I mentioned earlier on. One thing i found about competition is that what competitors are always very good at is complaining. What we're very good at doing is ignoring them. <laughs> Few alphas there. Yep, look pretty good. Should be happy with that run. And Tony, we've seen him climbing the leaderboard uh, in these first two rounds. That's only that, a nightmare. A nightmare on those ones. I've only shot these plates at 25 meters, um, and I've I am it right at the top of the disc, and that tends to work. It, it will do at 25, but imagine that same plate at 100 meters. You got aim above it, or that plate at 10 meters below it. It's um, it's all about the zero in the gun. Wayne Hemmings again. Come on, Wayne. Clean run. Nope. Last two plates. That was a fairly good run up until that last disc. Yeah, these plates are these last two at the 70 meter mark are, the, are, the, are what's causing people some issues. I see now Wayne's not the sides of right there and hose it from a meter away. Right on to the uh, targets at the back. What's well, roughly that distance there, about 30 metres? About 35 metres or so. As you can see, uh, Tom there in a way. He's coming to score the targets. A lot of patchwork as well that needs to go on. There's a lot of work behind the scenes. Yeah, it's two days to have a competition, so let alone shooting it. Neil, second ever competition. Doing well. Come on. Ugh. We're so hoping a clean <laughs> run, aren't we? <laughs> I know, I'm going to hit the roof. <laughs> He's going to need to change magazine, as he remembered. That'll be a no. <laughs> It's all experience. He's, he's enjoying himself shooting, which is the most important thing. And things like no, knowing when a magazine's change, uh, it will come with experience as he shoots more. He's taking his time with, uh, with those targets. We say this to new shooters, you're best off concentrate on being safe, making sure you get a good score. Your speed will come with, with, with practice and experience. So he's decided to shorten the distance to those targets to get a better score. That's not a bad way of doing it. That's a good clean run for me. I, I, I eat happy with that. Player's doing well. Last few. Doing very well here. Oh, my cursor again. I think I learned to keep my mouth shut. Mark change again. Last one. Come on, well done. Let's, let's see how she tackles uh, these paper targets. Yeah, she's staying away. Like I say, uh, keeping it safe, but that's unfortunately another jam. It's a good run from Claire though, she's doing well. She's remembered about magazine change, that's good.
Great stage, mate. Well done, mate. So that brings an end to round two of the Hawk Optics British Mini Rifle Championship. And Jim Starley takes the honours again here at Silverstone Shooting Centre. Kel will be very happy with, with second place for sure. And John Chambers, obviously first time shooting, straight out top three, he'll be happy. And then Josh Hicks again, coming in fourth. Again, I think he'll do very well. Abraham hasn't shot for some long, long period of time. Ben Ducker won't be too happy with his performance today. Yeah, down his seventh place. We kind of thought it'd be cat and mouse with uh, Jim and him. Uh, but as with uh, any sport, anything can happen. Yeah, it's been it's been good stages and bad stages on these things. I think Jim is, in, is interesting. He's showing his consistency. I think that's going to be the tough call when the championship gets, gets longer through. Coming top, in regular like that is going to be tough to beat for the competitors. Well, that's it for round two of the Hawk British Mini Rifle Championship from here at Silverstone Shooting Centre. A day not without some controversy. Um, look forward to seeing you soon for round three. See you then. Cheers. Hello and welcome to the Hawk Optics. Ah, yes. And it records the first shot, and I got a fly right. My. Silverstone <laughs> Shooting Centre. In this round two of the Hawk. British Mini Rifle Championships. Uh, last year. <laughs> <laughs> last year. Last year.